Buena fiesta de la Santísima Trinidad. Feliz fiesta de la Santísima Trinidad. Les saludamos y les damos la bienvenida aquí a San Pablo dentro de los muros de Roma en este día de fiesta, porque estamos celebrando la Santísima Trinidad. Damos la bienvenida a nuestro obispo, el reverendísimo Mark Eddington, que hoy nos está acompañando y nos compartirá su prédica. Les pido por favor tener en mano el boletín bilingüe español e inglés para poder así compartir, para poder así seguir y vivir esta Santa Eucaristía. Les invito por favor a participar en la Santa Comunión viniendo hasta acá para recibir el cuerpo y sangre de Cristo. Si quieres una bendición, basta Poner así las manos y el sacerdote te dará la santa bendición. También tenemos el pan senza glutine para poder compartir todos esta grande fiesta. Bienvenidos de nuevo y buena celebración. Thank you, Francisco. Good morning, everybody. I'm Mark Eddington. I'm the bishop of this church, and I welcome you to the feast of the Holy Trinity here at St. Paul's within the walls. You have been given an order of service. Your job is to follow it in whichever language it's easiest for you to follow. You'll also notice some notices on the pink slip in the middle. Please do take note of them. We send our prayers today to our rector, Austin Rios, who is away on a work and rest trip, both of which he does intentionally. And so I'm happy to be able to be here to preach today and to be with my colleague, Father Francisco. All people are welcome to receive the Eucharist in this place can come forward and receive in both kinds or only one if that's your preference. If you prefer to receive a blessing, just cross your hands over your chest and we'll take it from there. Bless you, welcome. Join us now as we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Trinity. Queen.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to your hearts are open, all the side now, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Dios omnipotente y eterno, que por la confesión de una fe verdadera nos diste a tus siervos la gracia de reconocer la gloria de la Trinidad eterna y de adorar la unidad en el poder de tu divina majestad. Consérvanos firmes en esta fe y adoración y llévanos al fin a contemplarte en tu sola y eterna gloria. Tú que vives y reinas un solo Dios por los siglos de los siglos. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth 
and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth, across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves, of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, 
and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lectura de la segunda carta de Pedro a los Corintios. Para terminar, hermanos, deseo que vivan felices y que busquen la perfección en su vida. Anímense y vivan en armonía y paz. El Dios de amor y de paz estará con ustedes. Salúdense los unos a los otros con un beso santo. Todos los hermanos en la fe les mandan saludos. Que la gracia del Señor Jesucristo el amor de Dios y la participación del Espíritu Santo esté con todos ustedes. Palabra del Señor. Demos gracias a Dios.
Santo Evangelio de nuestro Señor Jesucristo según San Mateo. Los once discípulos se fueron a Galilea, al cerro que Jesús les había indicado. Y cuando vieron a Jesús, lo adoraron, aunque algunos dudaban. Jesús se acercó a ellos y les dijo, Dios me ha dado toda autoridad en el cielo y en la tierra. Vayan pues a las gentes de todas las naciones y háganlas mis discípulos, bautizándolas en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo, y enseñándoles a obedecer todo lo que les he mandado a ustedes. Por mi parte, yo estaré con ustedes todos los días hasta el final del mundo. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Gloria a ti, the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier. Amen. Amen. Sisters and brothers, I have a sermon to preach, but before I get there, I just have to say, this is the first time I have preached at St. Paul's since those great bronze doors were opened. I wish you could see what it looks like from here when the church is open in this way. Has Austin told you about this? I just, I, I, I gotta videotape this, it's so good. <laughs> Because what you can't see, that I see, is that people are walking by the door as we are here, and some of them stop and ask themselves, is that a church? Are they, are they gathered for worship? And then sometimes they come in. It's the most wonderful thing to see. And it makes me feel like I'm in the right place today. So thank you for opening the doors. And thank you for that marvelous invitation that those open doors mean. Today brings us to the last great feast day of our church year, Trinity Sunday. The high summit of the journey that began for us back on the first Sunday of Advent. We have traced the whole story of our redemption going all the way back to the prophecies of the coming of the Messiah and Jesus' birth in Jerusalem, his manifestation to the world and his temptation in the wilderness by the devil. We've heard the stories of his mission of teaching and healing. On Palm Sunday, we were reminded of his triumphant entry into the holy city. We saw how quickly the people turned against him. We reenacted the story of his last supper with his friends. On Good Friday, we walked the way of the cross and we stood by as Jesus died for us. And on Easter Sunday, we rejoiced in his resurrection. I just captured all of nine months in the space of two paragraphs. Last Sunday on Pentecost, 
We gave thanks for the fulfillment of Jesus' promise that the Holy Spirit would come to be with us and guide the life we make together as communities of people with faith in Jesus, the church. And today, that whole story is brought to an end on Trinity Sunday, when the true nature of our God is revealed to us as creator, redeemer, and sanctifier, yet one God expressed in three persons. So you might think, I would continue, but we're going to wait. There it goes. All right. You might think that the readings we heard today would tell the story of that complicated, complex, difficult idea of the Trinity. You might think that today we would do some deep theological teaching in our scriptures, but something else happened instead. Instead, what we heard was the very beginning of the story and the very end of the story, right? We heard the creation account from Genesis, and then we meet up with Jesus at the very end of the Gospel of St. Matthew as he's saying farewell. So why, why did we hear those words? What are they supposed to teach us? Well, what I want to suggest to you is the first reading taught us something about the nature of God, and the last reading, the Gospel, taught us something about our nature. And in both, in both, there's a trinity to be glimpsed. So first think about the words of Genesis heroically read by our brother. Thank you for that excellent reading. God calls all things into being by speaking them into the world. But if we listen to those words closely, we learn some things about the nature of God. The first one is kind of obvious. God's very essence is creative. What it means to be God is to create. It's the first verb in the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And by the way, that turns out to be true of us too. Because if we are made in the image and likeness of God, and we are, then we must be in some essential way creative. That's what it means to be human. But that is a sermon for another day. So what it means to be God is to create. And theologians from Augustine to Dorothy Sayers have lived with this idea that creation is itself a trinity. Think about when you make a drawing. Maybe you're not a good artist, but even if you pick up a pencil to draw, in your idea is a mind of what you want to create. Your hand does the drawing. The result is what you bring into the world. That is a trinity. And that is deeply impressed upon us because it is the nature of God. That's what's there in the Genesis story the first piece, the second piece maybe not so obvious because these are such familiar words to us that we can easily miss something that just flies right by. When God speaks the creation into being, God is not a person talking to themselves. God is already somehow a community long before any of the creation comes into being. Did you notice that? Listen to those words toward the end again. Here's what God says. Let us make humankind in our image and according to our likeness. Who is that voice being spoken to? From a very early moment in the history of our faith, this account of creation was seen as the very first trace of evidence for the Trinity of God. That God was somehow both one God and a God expressed in three persons, all at the same time. Another piece of that early evidence was those three men who mysteriously visit Abraham and Sarah later on in Genesis, and whom Abraham instantly knows is the presence of God with them. So on this Trinity Sunday, we're first given a reminder that from the beginning of our story, God is beyond our ability to comprehend. God is holy. God is both the divine unity and a community of three persons. God is the original beloved community. So what about the end of the story? Those words of Jesus on the mountain in Galilee, at the very end of Matthew's gospel, 
It's often been described by the scholars as St. Matthew's Ascension Day story. We never get the coming of the Holy Spirit in Matthew's Gospel. We never get the sort of end of the story that we know most familiarly from Luke. What we get is Jesus calling the disciples to meet him on a mountain in Galilee. And then these words at the end, I will be with you always. It seems to be words of farewell. For centuries, there's been a debate about the idea that Jesus would speak here, as you heard both Francisco and I read in that gospel, in the name of the Trinity. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's because there's no account of the Holy Spirit in Matthew's gospel up to this point. So some scholars think these words were added later when the church was arguing about the idea of the Trinity. Other people say, well, Matthew is just faithfully recording what Jesus is teaching us for the first time about the nature of God. What we know is through our history as a church, these words have been known as the Great Commission, the Great the great instruction that we should go out into the world and convert people to faith in Jesus Christ. And we, let's face it, have preferred to focus on that rather than on what Jesus is teaching us about us. The first thing to notice is that Jesus calls the disciples to come together up the mountain. He calls them to meet up as a group their future as apostles, the ones who are sent to build the church and share the news, depends on them working, being, staying together. That beloved community that was first patterned by the Trinity of God must now establish the communities that we build as the church. That is a message especially important for us in this city, this place of such deep and continuous ecumenical dialogue. Jesus does not call us to come meet him up the mountain as Episcopalians or as Methodists or as Baptists or as Roman Catholics. Jesus calls all disciples together to come meet up the mountain and to work in beloved community. Too often we are focused on who should be allowed to come up the mountain path and who should be required to stay behind, but that is not the community we are called to build. And then notice this. Matthew's gospel ends with the 11 disciples coming to meet him up the mountain. We never hear the story in this gospel of the replacement apostle. Now there are just 11 and up the mountain they go. They've been in Galilee. They've worked with Jesus. They've spent three years walking alongside him, listening and watching as he taught and healed. They stood at the side while the whole drama happened. Now he is standing before them. And here's what the text says. They worshiped him and some doubted. How could they possibly doubt? They're standing here in the presence of their friend, the resurrected Jesus, a man they've known for years, and they're struggling to believe? Well, that's true of us too, isn't it? The beloved communities that we make as the church, those places that we create where we can be the image and likeness of the Trinity, they have to have a place. They must have room for doubt. They must have room for those who come struggling with doubt. Doubt is not the absence of faith. Doubt is the struggle of faith seeking God's love, like a seed in the earth longing for light and growing toward the warmth in faith that it will find the light. So our beloved community here, designed by the Trinity that is God, must respond to God's call together and must welcome everyone from the spiritual superheroes to the doubters and the questioners. And of course, because it's Trinity Sunday, there must be one more thing, and there is. Remember, 
The Great Commission does not end with Jesus telling the disciples to go baptize people. That's the part the evangelicals like to emphasize. But Jesus does not stop there. This is what he says. Teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. Well, okay. You all remember what Jesus commanded us, right? There were two commandments earlier in Matthew's Gospel. The first commandment is love God with all your heart and all your mind and all your strength. And the second is like unto it, love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, well, do we? We can hardly expect to be able to teach anyone else these things if we do not do them ourselves. The beloved community that we are called to be, designed by the Trinity that is God, is a community of love patterned on that eternal relationship between the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sanctifier. The way that we're able to reflect that Trinity here in this amazing place is by making a discipline of being together even when it's hard, even when we'd rather not, of including everyone who comes to us doubtful or not, maybe, maybe especially the doubters. That is our Trinity, a reflection of God's eternal nature a community together, open to all, and teaching God's love by the preaching of our lives. That's the Trinity we're not just called to contemplate, but to be. And by God's grace, it is the church we are becoming a little more and a little more with every next day. Amen. Stand up, please. We believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all the lands in the sea. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Son of God, eternally begotten the Father, God from God, life and life, to God from to God. God in the name of the Father, through him all things may for the same salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He has been born for the world. For us, for the first time, he was saved on the third day and also here in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven and see the light of the Father. He will come again in glory and in the and he is down. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord who gave our life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. We believe in the Son who will glory to the Lord. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one. Holy Catholic Apostolic Church. We are knowledge of the Baptist for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the day, the life of the world. And the world. Amen. Brothers and sisters, live in peace. With gracious hearts, appeal to the Lord 
saying, Glory to you, Holy Trinity. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Holy Trinity, you separated the light from the darkness. May your church ever dwell in your radiance and walk in the light of your love. Glory to you, Holy Trinity. We will praise you and solve you forever. Santísima Trinidad, tú pusiste el mismo cielo sobre todos los pueblos. Que los pueblos de todo el mundo vivan en paz unos con otros. Gloria a ti, Santísima Trinidad. Te alabamos y te exaltamos por siempre. Holy Trinity, you created all things good. Give us the will to respect and preserve your creation, that future generations may experience the goodness of all you have made. Glory to you, Holy Trinity. We will praise you, Father, so Santísima Trinidad, tú creaste el sol para darnos luz. Haz brillar tu luz sobre nuestra ciudad para que los lugares de sombra sean expuestos. Que tu justicia y paz reine en nuestros barrios. Gloria a ti, Santísima Trinidad. Te alabamos y te exaltaremos por siempre. Holy Trinity, from your hand comes forth creatures, great and small. As you care for even the smallest creature, show your loving kindness to all who call out to you for help. Grace the lives of your children with healing and strength. Glory to you, Holy Trinity. We will praise to you and exalt you forever. Santísima Trinidad, creaste a la humanidad a tu imagen y prometiste estar siempre con nosotros. Que los que han muerto se consuelen en tu eterna presencia. Gloria a ti, Santísima Trinidad. Te alabamos y te saltamos por siempre. Oh God, who would oh, form both heaven and earth, a single place. let the design of thy great love redeem the ways of our wrath and sorrows, and give peace to thy church, peace among nations, Peace in your dwelling, or peace in our hearts, through thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of sins, heaven and earth, mercifully accept this praise of your people and strengthen us to your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors. <coughs> Most merciful God, we confess our sins against you and to all who are in I We have no We have no We are truly sorry and repent for the Savior Son Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us. 
that we may desire our will and go in your ways to all the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. La pace del Signore sea siempre con voi. La paz del Señor sea siempre con ustedes. Démonos fraternamente un signo de paz. Pace pronto. Sit down. Siéntense, por favor. Para los anuncios, les pido, por favor, tengan en consideración la hojita rosada. Ahí encontrarán todas las actividades de nuestra parroquia de San Pablo, dentro de los muros de Roma. Hoy estamos saludando a nuestros hermanos que nos están visitando. Un abrazo para todos ustedes. Que Dios bendiga sus vidas. Después de la Santa Eucaristía, les eh, invitamos a tomar juntos un café con un corneto para así poder conocernos un poquito más, conversar. Y luego... Tendremos para los miembros de la comunidad latinoamericana el almuerzo en la cripta, así que están invitados. Este domingo yo creo que es el domingo último de, del coro, así que un gracias muy grande a todos nuestros hermanos y hermanas que participan en el coro de San Pablo dentro de los muros de Roma. Si desean almorzar con nosotros, bajen a la cripta. ¿Sí? ¿Ok? Bishop. Thank you, Francisco. Good morning, everybody. Just some brief announcements from me as well. Um, you know, we're here in the city of Rome, and as you may know, the, the Roman Catholic Church has a little bit of a presence here. Uh, so you may, you may have come in the door today thinking that you're in a Catholic church. You're in an Anglican church this morning. And one of the things that means that's a slight difference between our two churches is that our clergy, like Father Francisco and myself, we can be married. Now the reason for that is that we've decided, we've determined in the Anglican Church that our clergy need more help behaving well. And so we allow them to marry. And I'm happy to say that many of the spouses of our clergy in Europe are with us this morning here at St. Paul's. And there they are. Would you all please just make yourselves known a little bit by standing? There they are. These long-suffering people. who support the ones we see the most of, but their ministry is a deep and important one. And from my heart, thank you for being here and for the work you do. Thank you to the choir for being here. Join us following the service, if you can, for a little bit of coffee and say hello and introduce yourselves. We are glad you are here. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Thank you.
En nombre del Padre, del Filho y del Espíritu Santo. Amén. Te presento, Señor, estos dones que tus hijas presentan por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amén. Gracias. Espíritu Santo. Amén. Te presento, Señor, estas ofertas que tus hijas presentan por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amén. Gracias. The Lord will be with you. Leave your hearts. Let us give and thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For with you, co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord and Trinity of person and in unity of being. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of you of Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we pray to you, 
join our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sings this sing to proclaim the glory of your name. yourself and when we had fallen into sin and became subject to evil and death you and your mercy send Jesus Christ your holy and eternal son to share our human nature to live and die us one of us to reconcile us to you the God and Father of all. He stretched out his heart upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handing over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Después de la cena, tomó el cáliz y dándote gracias, se lo entregó y dijo, Beban todos de él. Esta es mi sangre del nuevo pacto, sangre derramada por ustedes y por muchos para el perdón de los pecados. Siempre que lo beban, háganlo como memorial mío. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption of Father in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and united life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and send you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy 
or your eternal kingdom. By this was through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory of yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, y adeso, bimbito, Ahora les invito a orar con la misma oración que nuestro Señor Jesucristo nos dejó como modelo de oración. Digamos juntos, Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado, venga a nosotros, hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día, perdona nuestro Señor, como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en tentación y líbranos del mal. Porque tuyo es el reino, tuyo es el poder y la, y la gloria, ahora y por siempre. Amén. Aleluya. Christ, as our Passover is sacrificed for us, therefore they keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Los dones de Dios para el pueblo de Dios. Tómenlos en memoria de que Cristo murió por ustedes y aliméntense de Él en sus corazones con fe y con agradecimiento. cuerpo de Cristo en guarda para la vida eterna. Amén. La sangre de Cristo realiza la salvación. El cuerpo de Cristo. Pan, salvación. De capo salvación. Bendice, Señor. Está nuestro Señor. Amén. The body of Christ. The bread of heaven. The body of Christ. The bread of heaven. The body of Christ. The bread of heaven.
Eternal God, Heavenly Father, we have a gracious acceptance in memory of Jesus Christ. The of the Spirit of the Lord, in the sacrament of the Lord, send us in the Lord. In the right of the Lord, and say, for God is in the Lord. In the Lord, and say, Amen. And now, God the Sender, send us. God the Sent One, come with us. God the Strength of those who go, grant us grace and power that we might walk with you and find those who seek you. And the blessing, mercy, and grace of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love and pray for in heaven and on earth this day and always. Amen. Amen.
Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 